Hello, and welcome to the Science Zone with Professor Ted. This is where Professor Ted hosts scientists from around the world and discusses their science as they come to visit the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Today's guest will be Mindy Jaffe. She is the co-founder and coordinator of the Windward Zero Way School. We works to have our schools have zero waste where we are reusing recycling everything that we can on all of our school campuses. That's the Worm Poo song uh, written by um, Gail Horry and Jessica Radovich and uh, sung by yours truly. And normally I would not present that to you folks, but we have a very, very special guest today um, who's worn all kinds of hats. And uh, probably the most impactful one has been um, leader of the Zero Waste Hui, um, founder of Waikiki Worm Company and um, also founder of the Worm Ohana, Mindy Jaffe. Welcome, Mindy. Thank you so much, Ted. I love your song. Can I, can I borrow it? Can <laughs> yeah, I sing I'm, it? I'm happy to share it with you. Um, <laughs> okay. Super amateur, but um, really looking forward to um, chatting with you, having you um, talk with uh, us about all the great things about compost and s- some of the great things that you've done in your life. Um, uh, we do want to um, let people know, though, about a great event at Kokua coming up this Saturday, is that correct? Right, at Kokua Market. Everybody knows Kokua Market. It's kind of iconic, just neighborhood natural food store. And it's so great. I love it because it's not corporate like the other guys. It's very mom and pop, and it feels very neighborhood. And I've been shopping there for 31 years. I've been a wow. co-op member over there for a long time. I've been a member um, for a shorter period of time. I think we joined, my wife and I joined in 90, 99 maybe, um, so a much shorter period of time. Um, I do uh, want to make sure that people know that the opinions and views heard may not be those of KTUH's licensees, management, or staff. So, um, yeah, so what time What time and okay. what's happening? It's just they're, they're, I think they're doing a sustainable Saturday. They're, they have... Uh, three weekends where they're having special programs and food and music and booths and so forth. So we're going to be the first one this Saturday, October 23rd, 10 to 2. And there'll be music and there'll be a barbecue and there'll be my booth, The Magic of Vermicast. Oh, that's great. Okay, so um, 10 to 2 this Saturday at Kokua Market, um, a great uh, event with multiple booths and food and things and um, the magic of Vermicast. So, right, there's also discounts in, in the store, too. So it's a good time to come and shop, okay. get some deli lunch, and uh, yeah. learn a little bit about how to grow plants with sure. worm poo, as you would call it. Right, and if you're not uh, already a member, it would be an opportunity to uh, sign up to do to do that as yes, well. Yes, there's adva- advantages to membership. And you can find out about those if you come um, this Saturday at the Cocoa 
market right there on University Street, um, 10 to 2 o'clock. And yeah. um, Mindy will be there with the magic of Verma Compost, and she'll be having uh, compost tea and other products Yep, available. we're going to brewing tea and uh, also have solid vermicast. So uh, we're selling it $3 a scoop if you just want a sample, or you, the best buy is a uh, four-pound container for $10. And um, vermicast tea is 5 bucks for a gallon. Okay. If you've never tried this stuff, we really encourage you. This is, as you know, Ted, the most amazing growth enhancer you could ever ask for well um with uh i i will say that as a um researcher in this area we have we have done work um with vermicompost and aqueous extracts of vermicompost and um you know results can vary but they're consistently um positive um on plants so they can certainly positively affect um Plants and the vermicompost is, you know, the highest quality vermpo- vermicompost um, or the highest quality type of compost, typically from a scientific perspective. Um, so before we talk about um, all of that good stuff, um, could you tell us a little bit of, you know, how, how you got to be here? You're, you're kupuna. Um, you, you've been doing things for a long time, but you haven't always been doing waste management. Um, how, how did you get here? What's your professional journey been like? Oh, well, let's see. Um, I made the great mistake of running for office in 2000 and got elected. I, that was not expected, but I did win by 144 votes, and I was stuck for two years in the state legislature. It was not fun. Um, but, you know, I thought you could make a difference, and in fact, uh, no, you can't. But um, I wanted to give it a whirl, and there I was. I was bored to tears and just shocked, shocked, shocked at the amount of corruption and stuff that goes on. Uh, I won't go into detail, but um, you can imagine. It was much worse than I had ever anticipated or could have ever imagined. Uh, I wanted out of there, but um, I did have one committee that I enjoyed, and that was the Energy and Environmental Protection, EAP. Okay, that's uh, how you Known as EAP. Okay, yeah. okay. And they, that year, they were talking a lot about where the new landfill was going. And I sat there in those committee hearings listening to all these guys coming up with their great ideas for building the landfill that they were going to make a lot of money off of. And I thought, you know, why does no one ever say how should we decrease the amount of waste that goes into the waste stream? Why are we talking about landfills? This is an island, you know? Come on. But nobody asked those questions, and I was like a newbie, and so I just kept quiet, listened to all that. Meanwhile, I'm kind of Googling around to see what other states and other municipalities are doing about waste. I'm discovering that everybody's doing something amazing. I mean, New Jersey had had closed their dump and it opened a resource recovery facility, New Jersey. And everybody else had all kinds of strategies for reducing waste. And the most interesting one to me was Assembly Bill... 939, I think, in California, they had said between the year 1999 and 2010, they wanted to reduce the amount of waste in the waste stream by 50%. So they said, that's now the law. We have to start doing this, municipalities, and here's the deal. The stick is, if you don't do it, there's a $10,000 a day fine. So that was the stick. The carrot Mm -hmm. was, they put a lot of money to this effort tens, hundreds of millions, and it wasn't just for big companies. If you were a Girl Scout troop with a really great idea, you could apply for a grant. Well, up and down the coast of California, there were a lot of people growing worms for fishing, and they also knew that worms ate garbage. Certain species sort of um, specialized in composting. Right. And uh, they said, they got together and said, you know, we should probably promote vermicomposting um, and get a grant and kind of build this part of our industry. So they did, and uh, it took off. They got plenty of, of schools and people to sign up and, and get worms and start taking care of it on their own. And um, the, the waste stream, when they hit the deadline, did not hit 50% decrease, it hit 60%. And that's the city of Los Angeles. You think on a little place like Honolulu, we could uh, manage to reduce our waste? Um, Nobody was talking about that, but I was thinking about it because I was seeing these great examples. Right. And something I saw everywhere was vermicomposting, using worms for organic waste. Okay. So I'm looking around trying to find worms here. 
Okay. Let me remind every let me remind everybody that we're talking to um, Mindy Jaffe um, of Waikiki Worm Company of um, Zero Waste Schools and of the Worm Ohana. Also remind everyone that the opinions and views heard may not be those of KTUH's licensees, management, nor staff. Okay, so you you were looking around. You I'm saw looking for worms. You saw I'm the I'm calling need. UH and I'm calling Bishop right. Museum and I'm calling the Department of Ag. And everyone says to me, "I don't think we have those worms here." I thought, "No, you got to have those worms here. Somebody has got to got to be. Worms are pretty ubiquitous throughout mm-hmm. the the world, and they got to be." So I'm looking and looking and looking. Somebody calls me up, says, "I hear you're looking for worms." I go to his place, and sure enough, in a pig pen under a pan uh, on the on the ground where there was water when he pulled it out I recognized immediately Perionics excavatus the local tropical right. uh, composting worm and I otherwise said, known as Malaysian blues uh, or they Indian have lots blues. of common names yeah. but I like perionics so yeah, we, we, sure. we make the kids use the scientific term because there's so many um, local ones nobody knows what you're talking about unless you uh, speak Latin That's right, right. yeah so we do um, anyway perionics I bought a handful and put them in a worm bin I mean the, the mainland would sell me a worm bin but they wouldn't sell worms because you can't export them into into Hawaii and and lo and behold, it ate through my garbage, and then I was collecting it from all of my neighbors, and it's grinding through, and I am really enjoying this. This is really fun. What year was this, Mindy? This was in 2004. Yeah. So um, at the very end of that year, I decided to start a business, and I registered the name Waikiki Worm Company because I was living in a studio apartment in Waikiki. It made lots of sense at the time. Uh, the name stuck, even though I've moved out. But for the first four years, I was running my worm business out of um, little tiny studio on uh, in Waikiki. And um, lo and behold, people did call me asking for worms. They were all mainlanders who would come here with their worm bin and had been searching for worms as well. So they were really happy to have me, to find me. And I went over to their house and sold them a handful of worms and uh, started doing workshops um, and before long, I had th- over th- a list of over 3,000 people who had taken a workshop, gotten an ounce of worms for me in a little flower pot. I, re- I remember those. So they, um, describe a little bit those, those mini worm bin systems that oh. you, you, you <laughs> pioneered. Those are cute. We actually, really did cute. Some, we actually did a project with a poster with a student. Um, looking at uh, perionics versus um, Icenia. Yeah, Icenia, and then looking at chicken manure versus food waste. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So tell us about those systems. Okay, well, it was a, f- a f- eight inch azalea pot, and uh, you tore up some cardboard bits as bedding. You threw in your ounce of worms. You, f- you gave them food with some shredded paper over the top. You watered them every day, and about four months later, you did a harvest. And Amazingly, all your food and cardboard had turned into this wonderful, rich substance that we call vermicast or worm castings or vermicompost. Um, It's worm poop, Mm -hmm. and it is absolutely amazing. Um, And that's when I got to know you because you got a grant to do a study, Mm -hmm. and for four years you bought vermicast from me in all kinds of different shapes and forms and and maturity, and it was real, real interesting seeing the research end of it because I was kind of the practitioner up at the farm doing this. Sure, and it was, um, you know, there was a lot of anecdotal um, evidence from growers and gardeners that that vermicompost was was very um impactful on um, plant production there wasn't a ton of science there was some science that, that that had been done um but there was you know also again the it was more anecdotal uh and so there was a lot of skepticism within the scientific community which um you know i always say i always say it's it's as much as a, a mistake scientifically to reject um, something without evidence um, as it is to accept something mm-hmm. with, without evidence. And I think, in fact, from a scientific perspective, it's, it's the bigger sin, quote unquote, um, because if um, you, know, you see something that might, there might be some value there, um, but it doesn't align with your own belief system, and believe me that scienti- scientists have, have belief systems and, and their own um, you know, hard-held um, opinions, They'll just say, no, no, no. 
And from my perspective is if, if there seems to be something happening, um, that's the role of the scientist, especially somebody who's interested in applied research. And so um, that was kind of the situation when you and I met was that there was a lot of evidence um, and a lot of early adoption of, of vermicompost, but there wasn't a lot of science to guide other people who were interested uh, because the early adopters, um, especially the growers, they don't have time to teach everybody else. They're, they're doing their own thing. Right. And so it's really up to the rest of us to figure out how that stuff works and then provide some science-based information. And so that's when you and I connected, when we were just getting started with some of that. I think that was 2006. Right. So we go way, we go way back. And um, I was growing worms up uh, in Wahiwa. Under chickens. I was using chicken manure as my feedstock. Right. And um, I was there for 11 years, Ted. And um, That was at Peterson's. At Peterson's egg farm. Wonderful. Oh, the Peterson's, the greatest, sweetest, most wonderful family I've ever met. Uh, and great eggs, by the way, if you live up Wahiwa. <laughs> I'm sure you know the Peterson's. Um, anyway, and um, their, their uh, chicken poop just grew wonderful worms and made beautiful cast. And... Um, um, I had my little business going, and uh, during that time, um, the city and county, th this is the recycling office of the city and county, they used to have an education division, and they started a program called Recycling Teaching Partners. They had some grant money, and uh, any school could apply for a $500 grant to have one of a number of us who did recycling education come to the school and do a project. So somebody did hot compost, and somebody did um, recycled art, and somebody did, there was a, 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 an assembly that you could get a song and dance um, auditorium program, and I did the worms. So I started going around to the schools with a quarter pound of worms, 10 gallon Sterilite tub, showing them how to set up a worm system. And I'd come back six months later, we'd do a harvest, see how much the worms had grown, and measure the amount of vermicast produced. And it was a very, very popular program. I was making lots of money on this. It was good right. fun. Right. The kids were learning a lot. I want to remind everybody that we're talking to um, Mindy Jaffe, um, waste management uh, guru. Uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, she's on to talk about a, a bunch of different things, including um, an event at Kokua this Saturday from 10 to 1 um, at Kokua Market, um, where there'll be all kinds of educational booths, all kinds of things happening, uh, food, um, as well as Mindy's own booth, uh, The Magic of Verma Compost. And before we get back to our conversation, I do have um, something I need to to play real quick here for everybody, and uh, we'll be we'll be right back. Special mahalo to Surf and Sea for supporting College Radio. Surf and Sea, Hawaii's ocean sports headquarters, has been on the beach for over 50 years in historic Haliva Town, where you can try before you buy surf, sup, and dive right in their backyard. For more info, you can go to surfandsea.com or at 637-SURF-SURF-AND-SEA on the beach since 1965. Aloha surfers and beachgoers today. Our winds are back down to 5 to 15 miles per hour and we have building surf. We have a north-northwest coming through right now in the early morning. North shore 1 to 2 occasionally 3 but rising to 4 to 6 later. Makaha checking in flat to 1 occasionally 2 rising to 3 to 5 on a quickly rising swell. Makapu 1 to 2, Sandy Beach 1 to 2 with some pluses, Diamond Head 1 to 2, and we have a rising south-southwest as well. Town shores right now, flat to 1 occasionally 2, nice clean conditions. Low tide is at 1015 at 4 tenths, sunset tonight, 602. That's today's surf check. This is Sonia Evanson right here on KTUH. All right, and we're back with Mindy Jaffe uh, to talk about uh, recycling and composting efforts, and uh, she was telling us a little bit about um, seeing what was happening as a, a legislator um, and then, um, you know, deciding to focus on worm composting, worm composting, and starting her own business. And uh, that morphed into um, a program that's still going very strong called the uh, Zero Waste Schools Program. Tell us about that, Minnie. Right. So I'm going um, around doing my little city and county recycling office program at 136 schools, Ted. I went to wow. between 2005 and 2012. I, we we got around, and um, often they ask me to stay for lunch, and I'm at the cafeteria and watching plate after plate untouched go into the trash can, and I'm thinking, 
wait a minute, these guys uh, have a lot of food waste. Nobody's eating this stuff. And this is incredible. Um, worms do three things for you. They create wonderful fertilizer. They d- eat your garbage. And they change your worldview. Because once you start regarding wor- waste as a resource, you look at everything differently. So I'm looking at this amazing, rich, nutrient-rich, fresh, uncontaminated resource going into the garbage cans day after day when I go to these schools and thinking, holy smokes, somebody's got to capture this. This, is, this has got to be the greatest asset that public schools have is this amazing, amazing uh, amount of food waste every day. Yeah, my, my kids won't touch that, too. Nobody so. does. <laughs> you know, the school lunch program is such a That's joke. A, well, well, again, I want to remind everybody that the opinions and views <laughs> heard here may not be those of KTUH's licensees, management, or staff. Um, yes, but I do know there's good people doing good work to change that. So the farm-to-school programs and other things, which we know... Um, are easier said than done, but there have been there have been um, a lot of effort and and some successes. But um, despite that, we do have, have this food waste. So what did you do? What what did you do to solve that issue or address it? Well, um, uh, the, the greenhouse got a grant. Remember the greenhouse? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, they're they're still around, but they were really really busy back in the day, and they decided to go to Palolo Elementary School and do a zero waste school. And I thought, oh, yeah, right. Anyway, they called me to do the worm piece, and I knew that would work, and I didn't know much about hot composting at the time. And uh, they figured out a way to set up a separation station so the kids would come through and dump their milk, their rubbish, and then their food into a bucket so they could collect every day, measure the amount, and go out and compost. They would get tree mulch from the local tree trimmers. And um, I'm, I set up a big worm bin. And we did the kitchen waste, fruits, veggies, and grains, which is easier to get as prep waste than uh, post-consumer waste, the plate scrapings. So they were composting the plate scrapings. I was taking care of the worms. And that year, I believe we diverted pretty close to 20 tons. Now, this is Palolo Elementary. This is not a wealthy neighborhood. I've been doing this for 16 years. I've never seen kids eat lunch. It all goes into the buckets. Um, in rich neighborhoods and poor neighborhoods, the kids don't eat this stuff. This um, The program is way behind the times. And, um, and, and the way kids eat now is different. They snack all morning, so they're not really hungry at lunchtime. And they give them this massive, massive plate of food. But that massive, massive plate of food is loaded with nutrients. And we can capture that and compost it. Right. So that's what we started to do. Okay. So um, what does... Um, you're at how many schools now? So you, you started Palolo with the greenhouse, um, yeah. but you're largely on the windward side now. Is that yes. Yeah. Well, so what happened what was, was I, like? um, uh, I ended up uh, doing some work at Pearl City High, mm-hmm. and uh, we got a grant from Hawaii Community Foundation. Uh, we were thinking of doing um, uh, waste management as a vocational track because I was having fun taking care of the worms and building compost piles and I thought this would be a really good job for other people and the special ed department was real interested so I got a grant to do a summer school program over there Uh, I was there for about two years and um, it really gave me a chance to try everything in the book and I did we did black soldier fly larvae remember them oh man I love the BSFL Uh and um, And you were at you you did some of that at um uh, the uh, Pro City Urban Garden Center, or at least we had a couple yes. of students come uh, well, Yes, because yeah. they're right down the street, and we did lots and lots of things uh, with them, um, collaboration projects, which was fun. But we did we did Bokashi and Hot Compost and Worms and Black Soldier Fly. Uh, the, the cool thing we did with Black Soldier Fly was make biofuel from them, right? They very have a very high lipid content. Yeah. We squeezed out their juices and um, did some high school chemistry and made biofuel. That was cool. But I'm more and more interested in how all this one wonderful uh, resource that the school has could be used in various different ways. We did really, really well, and, and, and um, we had a compost sale, and uh, it was very, very well uh, received by the community. We had people on the first sale with their bucket, and we didn't quite sell out. And on the second sale, there was a line an hour before, and people did not come with a the bucket. They came with a the truck because yeah. they had tried it, tried it and said, I now want... 
a hundred dollars worth just load me up right. so we thought I thought oh well, there's a market here so that was where we had our first compost sale and that's become really a highlight of everything we do because we make a lot of money for the schools with the resource the recovered resource products which that's are great. vermicast compost and Worms. So if people are hearing this and want and want some some access, I know that the um, the hot compost is not available since um, because of COVID and right. some other issues. But you do you do have year. vermicompost. We have vermicompost, so which is want, why we're selling it at Cocoa yeah. Market this weekend. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if you want to check out, if you're curious, um, there are some uh, uh, science based. Um, research um, briefs and, and um, uh, videos and things that are aimed towards a uh, layperson. Um, there's one called Composting in Hawaii that's on YouTube um, that just talks about the, the generic process. The material that Mindy is talking about is not a proprietary blend or anything. It's vermicomposting is, um, is, a, um, is a known process. Um, it produces a um, known you know a, um, a product of known quantity and quality and if you do it correctly um, you will get a high quality um, product and and there's lots of science to, to support that um, so Mindy is going to be down at Cocoa Market this Saturday from 10 to 1 there'll be lots of other booths there'll be food it's a celebration of Cocoa Market's 50th birthday we want to shout out to Cocoa Market we want to shout out to those Folks that worked hard um, to keep keep it going um, in, the, in the, the last year or two. Um, so um, ma- mahalo to to um, everybody, and it'll it's going to be a um, celebration um, this Saturday um, from ten to one. So um, Mindy, <coughs> as um, you know, you're in you're in how many schools now and uh, if people want to get in touch with you to get a compost and aren't able to make it saturday can you tell us how to do that and then um we're coming up to the top of the hour so i also want to hear about the worm ohana mm-hmm. as as well okay <clears throat> well I'm, I'm at five schools in kailua now uh, they kicked me out of pearl city because i was reducing the waste too much and they felt that that exposed them to too much liability the trash haulers were going to sue them so um essentially they threw me out of pearl city and um lani kai elementary school i've been doing um some uh, what's, uh, uh, what's the name now the, it's um, now called Ka'oha, Ka'oha, which school. is the traditional name for that particular yes, Ka'oha. Ili, they yep. changed it a few okay. years ago right okay yeah um a wonderful uh wonderful little charter school that gave me just great freedom to do whatever I want. So I came over from Pearl City, and they said, we want to be a zero-waste school. Do whatever you want to do, and we will support you. And that was just what's a wonderful opportunity. So I eliminated all the stuff that didn't work so well at um, Pearl City, and we really went to hone our procedures and protocols for, um, for a school waste management system and we dubbed it the Ka'ohau protocol so it's like a franchise I've got it all set up exactly all the equipment you need all the procedures all of the methodology is has been figured out over the years we're very efficient we're very cost effective and we produce absolutely marvelous product and we get rid of all of not all, but pretty close to all of the organic waste on campus, including food, milk, green waste, cardboard, and paper. So anything organic never go, never hits the dumpster. It comes to me, and we process all of that stuff, all the organic, quote, waste resource right there on campus. We will take the, um, the waste volume down by 90% on average. Wow. Yeah, at Ka'ohau before COVID, which sort of threw us all under a bus, um, they needed a waste pickup maybe once every two weeks, maybe once a month sometimes, because there's essentially nothing in the dumpster. We were we were taking care of all of it on campus, essentially turning it into rich soil and money. Wow, oh, that's great. Um, and so again, we're we're speaking with Mindy Jaffe. Um, and we're talking about the uh, zero waste schools program, which has a website and is also um, on social media. Ron, Ron Brasher um, runs the social media, so mahalo, Ron. Um, for that, a reminder that the uh, opinions and views heard may not be those of KTUH licensees, management, or staff. So, um, 
so yeah, you, so you created, and we've been there. We've we've brought our own students from UH Manoa um, to visit, and um, I don't know if we're able to do that again this year, but I would love to bring them out if we Ted, can. Ted, I've been waiting for you to okay. ask. It's been so okay. long. Yeah, yeah. We, we can. We can. Uh, I we was, lost the COVID of years. year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we lost the COVID year, and yeah. I think uh, we were both too busy uh, the year before. But right. we love to have your students come out, okay. and I like to just blow their minds because yeah, it's just amazing it to see. Blowing. Yeah, it is yeah. mind blowing. So we started at, at Lani Kai, which right. became Kaohao, and. And uh, the next year, we uh, we started at Ke'ele Pulu. Yep. Then um, we followed that with Kainalu Elementary. Right. And um, in 2018, we added Enchanted Lake Elementary and Kailua Intermediate wow. School. So four elementaries and, uh, and oh, the intermediate in the school. area. That's mm-hmm. so great. Um, so tell me about the Warm Ohana. What is, what is that? Okay, well, here's COVID, comes around, and um, my the people that are writing my uh, paycheck, uh, we've got a grant from City and County, said, um, <clears throat> your deliverables have kind of disappeared you need to come up with some right. different ways of doing your educational piece sure. because besides doing operations doing all this composting and and food collecting we also have an educational program with each grade level they're involved with operations but we also try and hit the science as well and um, some schools do more than others but uh, they all do some and we're, we're proud of the quality of the um, the the information that we're able to uh, get out there and it's all hands-on we have really fun classes anyway can't do it because everyone's at home and uh they're also cooking and eating at home a lot and have a lot of food waste and suddenly they're asking about and what about these worms because um we're stuck at home and we'd like to start a garden and da 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 i thought okay this is the time to go online and create um, a worm program that mm-hmm. can be an online program. So we started the Zero Waste Worm Ohana. I got 10 families from each of my five schools, so 50 families participated. I got a grant, and um, so it wasn't going to cost them anything. And um, it, we had the parents come, 10, you know, this is heavy COVID time, just 10, and we were all spread out outside with masks on, and right. we had to disinfect everything. It was ridiculous, but we had enough of a workshop to give the parent a quarter pound of worms and a box and some bedding and a bin blanket and a scale and, so, and information on how they're going to take care of it. And off they went home, and I'm doing a weekly video walking them through the home vermicomposting process and um, we did it for 24 weeks it was a six-month project and obviously not everybody stuck with it but I had a bunch of people that stuck with it pretty darn well Mm -hmm. and at the end of our six months we did a zoom harvest Um, I never ever want to do a Zoom anything. I just hated it. And it's just not nearly as fun as being with people. Uh, We're going to have a harvest party this next time around. Um, But we did our Zoom harvest, and the people who started with a quarter pound of worms now have one pound, two pounds. Our record was three pounds, 8.6 ounces from really? a quarter pound. That's and my world's many, record. And, and what? how many months was this? Six months. Wow. So six months project. That yeah. is it. That is, an impre- that is impressive. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I had some really, really good worm growers. And th- when you hold that ball of worms, you know, the way we did it is a very old-fashioned in-a-box way where you do a hand harvest. When you hold that ball of worms, you remember that handful you started, and now now it takes three people to hold up your worm wow. colony. There is some kind of bonding thing that goes yeah. on. I think for uh, people who aren't familiar um, with worms, and we're talking to um, with Mindy Jaffe, um, founder of Waikiki Worm Company, um, the Zero Waste School, who we, and um, we're talking about um, worm ohana now. Um, for those who haven't done a hand harvest, um, maybe describe it and, and how you get <laughs> and and how you get this ball because okay. i I've, I've experienced the ball and it, it is a it is very it is a very um uh, visceral kind of thing, for yeah. sure. Well, any uh, kindergartner at any of our schools can tell you that worms are photophobic. And what does that mean, boys and girls? It means they don't like the light. So they're going to move away from the light. So you dump out your bin, you fluff up all the material, and you make a, a round mound. And you start to pick away at that mound. The light's shining in on all sides. And the worms are moving down, down, down to get away from the light until you pick it all away. And there's this big ball of squirmy wormies and the energy they emanate is just infectious so this is good fun we love to do the harvest and the first time people do it they're astounded and they kind of fall in love 
And you have a, um, there is a Wormohana webpage off yeah. of the zero, zero uh, so, waste. Yeah. So what happened was um, uh, this, this kind of worked. And, I, and um, some of our compost um, customers said, hey, if you ever do that worm thing for adults, you know, we really like to do it. And I thought, okay, time to get this out, make it a community. So we founded the Oahu Community Wormohana. And you could look it up on wormohana.org. And we invited everybody who wants to do it to come to a worm workshop, which we have periodically, but we also have an online worm workshop. You can buy the kit with everything you need, in quarter, including a quarter pound of worms, and you can start from scratch. There's a vast, extensive video library, so you can uh, binge watch me, and <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you everything I know about worms, and you can have the great pleasure of taking care of your food waste right there at home yeah. with your own colony of composting worms. And I speak from experience. It is a it is a, a, a really neat thing to do. Um, I want to mahalo Mindy Jaffe. Um, she's going to be at Cocoa Market this Saturday um, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Oh, till 2 p.m. Thank mm-hmm. you. Ten. Uh, so four hours, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Cocoa Market. It's part of a 50th... Um, anniversary celebration of Cocoa Market that they'll be doing for three three or four weeks, I guess? Is that? Yeah. Okay. This is, they're, they're, they're having a big blowout. This That's is great. 50 years in business. you gotta, you got to be excited. Sure. And uh, you're going to be there just for this weekend, though. So yes. if you want to meet Ma- um, Mindy, um, come this weekend. It's, um, um, what is that, the 23rd? Right. October 23rd from 10 to 2 at Cocoa Market right there on University. Um, she'll be talking about the magic of vermicompost, of vermicast, and she will have um, compost tea, vermicast, and a bunch of other things, um, along with all the other vendors and food and music and things that are happening again at 10 to 2 this Saturday at Kokua. Mindy Mahalanui, thank you so much for joining us. Um, any last last words of, of wisdom or um <laughs> experience or education before we say aloha? Um, it, it has been a wonderful journey, and um, the worms have taught me everything I needed to know. I've ordered my universe for me and uh, opened the world in ways I never expected. So I, I'd like to share that experience with y'all. So go to wormohana.org and um, check it out. Right on. Thank you, Mindy. Okay, we're going to be um, closing out the hour with just another uh, song or two, um, DJ Yasona. Um, is not going to um, make it uh, this week. I think we will be um, setting up automation um, for him, um, but he will be back next week, so please um, uh, keep it locked. Uh, In the meantime, we have um, the Hines with a brand new song here.